up, guys, and welcome to another episode of My Fight Within. Um, last episode, we talked a little bit about uh, my, my fight with Neil Cook and the injury, and, and, and that kind of set me back. But during that time, I was able to um, watch a lot more tape. I was maturing in my career as a fighter, and so I was able to uh to kind of dive deeper into into the psyche and 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 more of being a student of the game rather than always trying to do 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 ever since i had started fighting i never got a chance to really enjoy training or or just learn i was always getting ready for a fight uh like i said before in, in 2008 when i started training i i literally trained for like two months and and i was like hey, yeah I, I can fight yeah let's take my first fight which, which was, you know, it, back then there wasn't, uh, uh, what, what's it called, CSAC, not CSAC, uh, CAMO. There wasn't CAMO, which is the Amateur um, Athletic Commission in California. And, and so all they did was really send a guy from the Athletic Commission. They came in to evaluate you. You went to a gym and they're like, all right, you're going to do one round of sparring with, an, with a partner. You're going to do another round of... Uh, bag work and you can do a, a round of rolling for jujitsu and that was it and at the end of that they literally just give you a thumbs up and say yeah you're cleared here's your fight card or no you're not and you know at the time one of my buddies and i were making our pro debuts and i was like hey man just make me look good i'll make you look good so it's kind of fixed you know uh but, but anyways besides the point where we're a few years into my mma career i'm four and one uh i'm training at a really really good gym uh, at rain training center. And I never really, I didn't, didn't do a lot of, of cross training at the time, just because we had such a good group of guys to go with and such good training partners. And so I had gotten a call, um, from, from a guy that I was trying to work with up North in, in the Bay area, who was managing some guys. And, and, uh, he, we had set up, we, we got a hold of Bellator and set up a time for them to come out because they had their, their offices in, in Newport Beach, like Costa Mesa slash Newport Beach area. And so uh, one of their, I don't know if he was, I don't know his technical title. He was like a matchmaker slash scouting, you know, talent scout, something something along those lines. And and he came out, Zach Light, who's, who's actually a former fighter himself, he came out and, and just evaluated me. And I didn't see him walk in until I was in on the mats, you know, get sparring, warming up and sparring. And, and that day, uh, I made I made sure to go with a bunch of big names. And, and I went with, uh, I sparred a couple rounds with Ishii. And I just remember him and I kind of always going back and forth and battling it out. Uh, he never held back. I went around with Pat Cummins. I went around with Shab, with Munoz, and uh, I think Tony Ferguson. And... And I just remember being in the cage with Ishii and, and some of the bigger guys after we got done sparring. And Munoz is over on the other side of the gym talking to, to the talent scout for Bellator. And he just not in his head. They're kind of talking. You can see him conversate. And I'm kind of nervous. And I'm like, no, I shouldn't go introduce myself. Well, maybe I should. So says, you know what? I'm going to go introduce myself. So I, I literally circle around the, the cage to grab my, my gloves and, and my, uh, you know, some tape and, and whatever I, I had at the time. And, and I go, I'm starting to make my way towards the, towards the front of the gym and he's gone. So immediately I'm like, man, he didn't like me. This dude's gone. You know, he doesn't care about me. And I, and I'm, I'm like running around trying to find Mark. I'm like, Mark, what did he say, man? What did he say? He's like, oh, he's like, you're good, man. You're good. I just told him that, you know, if, if you're ready at the time, and I told him, no, I don't think you're ready for, for like that level of competition. So my heart sank. And he goes, but I did tell him that he would be ready if you gave him like a three fight development deal. So I was like, when did you become a manager, bro? And it was like the perfect thing to say. And next day I get a call from, from Bajorn Rebney who owned it at the time. And he called me direct and he goes, Manny, we'd, we'd really like to extend an offer you know, when would you, when would you have time to come take a look at the contract? And so I drove, I drove there uh, during the day. I didn't think I was working at the time. And I took my brother, my wife and my, my daughter. And we went to, to Newport beach and, and I'm trying to play big, you know, big guy. Like I know what's up. And I'm like, yeah, let me just, uh, let me take a look at this. 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to go show it to some people. I, I know a, a, a lawyer. So I sent it to him and he's like, look, I really don't understand this verbiage, but just know that if you sign with them, you will be signing away your likeness. I was like, what are you talking about? It was your nickname, your image, like whatever your persona is. He goes, you'll be signing that away and they'll, they'll own it. And so I'm like forever or and he goes, no, no, just while you're under contract. So I said, whatever, man, I don't, I don't have that, you know, that much of a, of a persona or image right now. You know, I don't, I made sure to always walk out with a Mexican and American flag. And I got that, uh, obviously I'm Mexican American, but I, I got that idea from Tito. I just didn't like how he had it on the pole. I felt like, because I was so passionate about being Mexican, I'd always walk out to Mexican music. Um, I would have the flags draped over my shoulders and I made sure that I walked out with them. I always shaved my head and I had some sort of facial hair. Like I never fought because I felt like I looked like a baby. And so I wanted, I wanted there to be some sort of intimidating factor. And so um, this is actually a success and a success story because I, I ended up getting signed with them. I was so excited. I didn't really read the details of the contract. Uh, I just know that it was, it was a nine fight contract. But I, what I was excited about was that it was a, um, a, a, a Bellator contract and there was a three fight development deal tied into it. So according to my contractor, from what I understood, my contract was supposed to be a three fight development deal. So I'd fight on the undercard for three fights and then I would have a, uh, a six fight tournament deal, which would, it was another way for them to kind of lock you down because if you want to fight, it automatically extends your contract. And so, um, I, I get a call, you know, a couple weeks later, I, I end up signing with them. I get a call, um, and, and they go, Hey, we have your first fight lined up. It's against uh, Ryan Martinez. So I go, cool. I look him up. It's a couple of videos online. Um, can't really see too much. Not just know that he's a big guy. So I'm like, all right, cool. This is going to be a fun fight. Yeah, let, let's do it. And so I go to take it. it it's actually funny because him and I were actually scheduled to fight before that in Canada. And, and the fight got canceled because he was unable to make the trip for whatever reason. Um, if you guys want to find him and ask him, uh, I just know that the promoter had called me and said, hey, he can't make it up here. Uh, do you want us to find you another opponent? I said, yes, no one took the fight for whatever reason, because uh, I'm not a big heavyweight. You know, I'm not I'm not some big, intimidating Brock Lesnar looking guy. Um, I don't know that they could have maybe maybe people thought I wasn't worthwhile or whatever. But uh, the promoter was great. They wanted to find me a fight. They couldn't. And so I ended up not fighting Canada. And it's really funny that we both got to Bellator and ended up fighting our first fight there. But um I, I go back and, and, uh, you know, I'm getting ready for a fight and, and I'm training, I'm throwing elbows and knees and, and, and just, just training. So I train, I, I, I get in good shape and, and I go to Bellator and, and we're fighting in uh, Indiana at the, uh, I already forget what it was called because it was such a terrible night, but, uh, at the Horseshoe, Horseshoe Casino in Indiana. And we actually flew into Chicago. I believe we flew into O'Hare Airport and we drove to Indiana. So it's kind of like a border city. Um, and, and so we, we go out there and I'm warming up. Everything's going great. It was my first time ever kind of being outside of the state to fight, but being at this level and competing. And so they, I didn't know, you know, they shuttle you, they pick you up. They make you feel like royalty. Like you get there and you get like a three or $500 check, like in cash envelope. And they go, Hey, here's your stipend for the week. Use this for you and your team. Um, I took my coach Danny over there, my boxing coach and Rafael Davis met us out there. Who's also, uh, an old Bellator fighter. And, and, um, we're there, we're kind of eating. I don't really have a schedule. Like, I don't know what to do. And, and so come weigh-ins, I, to me, this was like a huge surprise because about a, an hour before the televised weigh-ins, we all weighed in in the back or a couple, it must've been a couple hours before weigh-ins. We all waited in the back and they go, Hey, when you get out there, just like pose real quick and do a face off. We had already weighed in. I didn't know, even though I, I had been in MMA for, for a couple of years, I didn't know that that was done. Uh, it's called a ceremonial weigh-in is, is the is the term for when people come out there, but the official weigh in can take place in the morning. Like that's what the UFC does now is they do, they do their, their uh, official weigh in 
in the morning so that the fighters can go eat and not be depleted. And then by the time they get to the ceremonial weigh-in, which is where all the media is at and all the fans, um, they're, they've already weighed in. So that number that they're reading off is actually the number that they weighed in with in the morning. And and so I, to me, that was like a huge surprise. I was so taken back by that. I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so weird. And and so I was I was literally like a fan. I was imagine being a fan getting like backstage access, but I, I was actually competing because I was a huge fan of the sport before I even started competing. And so I I go in there and we weigh in, we do a quick face off or whatnot. The day of the fight, now I remember being kind of nervous, but um, there's a crackle and barrel restaurant like right next to the hotel, and so we went there every day and used our stipend. I fight a heavyweight, so I never had to cut weight, and and we go to get our excuse me we go to our uh our meeting we have a there's like an officials meeting and like rules meeting and stuff so we go to the meeting and they go hey everyone competing in the tournament remember that you're not allowed to throw elbows and i think knees too or something like that and i was like whoa like i'm sure i've literally been practicing elbows this whole camp and and i go i think it was big john i go, I go hey man why aren't we allowed to throw elbows he goes oh you're a part of the tournament and I go, no, I'm not. And he goes, yeah, you're an alternate. So even though I was an alternate, I was technically a part of it. And in my first, my development deal was three fights. So the first three fights, I was going to get paid three and three. So three grand to show up, three grand to win. So six grand. Uh, my second fight was four and four. And I think five and five or six and six for my third fight. Then my first tournament fight was supposed to be 10 and 10. So 10,000 to show, 10,000 to win. And then it grew to like 20 and 50 and, and all these crazy numbers, right? The deeper you got into the tournament, the more money you made. I think it ended up totaling like a hundred grand or a million dollars or something like that. I don't, I don't quite remember, but um, I just remember being really confused by, by the rules. Like, no man, like I've been practicing this. Like, what are you talking about? And so that kind of threw me off. And, and this is these are the type of things that people don't see. Like they don't see the three months or four months of preparation for one fight. They don't see the schedule change and the diet and and the impact it has on your family or your kids because you're constantly focusing on yourself or your opponent or what you need to do, where you need to be, what you need to eat. And, and that's an all day, everyday thing for the span of your training camp. And then on top of that, you have to cut weight for those for those fighters that have to cut weight and you have to be in the same hotel as your opponent. Then you have to uh, weigh in with your opponent and you're in the back in a very like small, intimate setting. And the whole time you're like around your opponent, you are um, by him and like you're not just competing. Like, you're going out to take each other out like you're going out to punch and kick each other, knowing that one man's going to walk out. And so that that's what people don't see. And I think it's such an important part of athletics is the mental aspect of it, because I, I never really got that down for as long as I fought. Uh, I never really got a hold of those emotions. It was always just like, hey, man, let, let's go. Once I get hit, I know I'm in the fight, so I'm good. So anyways, it kind of threw me off a couple a couple a couple hours later. We're sitting there fighting. This was at a casino like theater. And so the cage was actually on the stage and it was like a really cool venue because it was, it was like a classic theater and all the seats kind of went up and and so i'm sitting there fighting and i see it's the first time i ever fought in a cage all my previous five fights or four fights were in a ring um and, and so it's my first time ever fighting in a cage i had trained in a cage so i didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal but once you get in the cage you see how much bigger it is than like your normal gym cage that that most gyms have in there um to save space and so it was way bigger there's a bunch of graphics on the floor and on the walls uh just the smells different it's bouncier and it's actually really slippery that's why a lot of times you'll see the guys pour water on the on the mat because it helps you grip when you're when you're moving around and if you're a type of fighter that moves around a ton it really helps you and so um i was already kind of taken back and sacking myself out i remember um, dropping them in the first round and never really feeling like I had enough energy to finish them. Like I remember Rafael Davis yelling at me, like, go get him, go get him. And I'm literally like walking to him as he's on the ground because I, I dropped him. 
and and uh it was just nuts i i didn't realize until after the fight that he was like a a state caliber wrestler in high school and <laughs> had a wrestling background i thought he was just a big like brawler dude because i was like oh you know he kind of looks like a brawler cool and uh <clears throat> excuse me um first round he kind of just smothered me and, and just took me down at will uh i didn't practice too much wrestling second round did a lot of the same thing in the third round i think he was kind of annoyed i was kind of annoyed um i think by that time because of the of the punches he had thrown and and the pressure he had given i, I you know he should have beat me or he should have made me quit again i'm stubborn i didn't i remember having a huge hematoma on the side of my head and, and just like third round starts and like a dummy i drop my hands and i walk over to him and i'm like come on like let, let's let's brawl like let's fight you know i, I want to fight this is what i got signed to bellator for is to fight not to wrestle and and I, I was just annoyed obviously wrestling is a very important part of of mma and and i was really annoyed so i dropped my hands and i kind of drop i bend over at my waist a little bit and and I just remember him like kneeing me. He either kneed me or uppercut me. I don't remember. My body was bent over. And, and when he hit me, my head just turned up. And I just remember seeing lights at the top. And, and I come back down and he's on the other side of the cage. And I'm like, oh, man, we're still in a fight. Like, I thought I was knocked out. And I go, man, we're still in a fight. And so uh, something happened. I ended up dropping him again in the third round. And he ended up winning by decision. I felt so bad because it was my first real loss it was the first time where someone actually beat me where i was like yeah that guy beat you fair and square it wasn't an injury there's no drama you know or controversy this guy out wrestled you he out grappled you he was just a better mma fighter that night and i remember trying to call my uh my wife and and she didn't pick up so i called my dad and and uh i i just man I, I walked out of the casino i'm in the casino and this is a friday night so the casino's packed and people are just looking at me because i'm bruised up i think i still had my tape on my hands and and i'm crying in the middle of this casino i'm in tears calling my dad like i should have beat this guy i could have beat this guy i know i could have and i call my wife and they're like treating me like a baby just like yeah son it's okay bud and i'm like what and i i'm just devastated man and and what sucks like a dummy i went to go drink and and what's really dumb is that we had to get up at like five in the morning because we had a flight at six i think we had to get up at four to make it to the airport on time and and i was just devastated and i was super depressed but that was like one of the only times where where i felt like extremely motivated to kind of get back out there and prove myself. And so I didn't stop training. I got right back in the gym. Uh, I was helping coach the, uh, I was helping coach boxing at rain. And, and uh, so that was kind of fun to go back to. Um, I was almost distracting. And so I didn't really have time to deal with my emotions. And I just remember kind of getting back to work and, and trying to go back to the routine I started working at AT&T at the retail location and and um, uh, just kind of almost diving real deep into just like, let's work and let's let's make this all a distraction. Let's pretend that never happened. And then my second fight got booked. I don't even remember who the original opponent was. It was supposed to be a really good fight. Uh, I believe it was Maurice Jackson, who's like six, seven or, or something ridiculous like that. And to me, again, I'm stubborn. I was like, yeah, man, I'll take it. Let's do it. Uh, my opponent ended up getting changed. And and it, it just kind of messed with me. You know, I didn't realize now talking about it and looking back on it, you realize how much that mentally messed with you and, and mentally it did. And I feel like I never really recovered from that as an athlete. And um, I will get into that story on my second Bellator fight on the next episode and but we're also going to start talking about some of the things i had to deal with personally and, and what happened in my my personal relationships what happened in my uh, professional relationship uh trying to start a business and trying to venture off doing my own thing and, and so uh we'll talk about that on the next episode and we'll talk about how 
uh, how that second loss in Bellator kind of really impacted the rest of my career and the rest of my time with them. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Remember that this is going to be on YouTube, so please share it, subscribe, subscribe, uh, like it. Their algorithm's really different, so you guys have to go in there, uh, leave a comment, do do whatever you can. And so, uh, thank you guys for the support. We will be back up with the fight within really soon. We have some really uh, interesting guests and some really big name guests lined up for you guys. If there's anything that you guys want me to talk about or anything that you guys want me to share. Please message me at the Fight Within Podcast on Instagram, uh, the Fight Within Podcast on Facebook, or uh, TFW underscore Pod on Twitter. Just message me directly. All all my my handles are for Twitter and Instagram are just Bam Bam underscore Lara L A R A. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under Manny Bam Bam Lara. And remember to please share this, subscribe, and like it. Uh, and just if you guys want me to talk about anything, have a particular guest in mind. Uh, let me know and, and I'll try to reach out and have them on. So thank you guys for your support. And remember that everything was impossible until someone did it.